Okay, welcome to Math 7, um, Chapter 1, Part 1. This is about the Cartesian plane or the grid uh, in page four, on pages 4 to 11. So this is the grid that you're going to see and that we're working with here. And this is the Cartesian plane. So right here in the middle is the number 0. And everyone here, all these lines here, this is the x-axis. This long one here, from top to bottom, is the y-axis. So when we talk about the x, we're talking about this one here, this green line here. When we talk about the y, we talk about the red one. Up and down is y, left and right is x. So when we start to label this, we have 0 in the middle. The first one is 1. The second one is 2, 3, 4, etc., etc., etc. When we go left, because it's on the opposite side of 0, we start to label this negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, etc., etc., etc. So this goes negative, and this is positive. As we go up and down, each line will be, if we go down below, it goes negative <clears throat> because we're moving away from zero. Think of it that way. As we go f up, sorry, this should be a one, we move up. These are all positives. So as you can see, this way moves is negative, and this way moves positive. So that's the Cartesian plane in a nutshell. The y-axis can go positive or negative. The x-axis can go positive or negative as well. When we look at the different quadrants, we have quadrant 1, which is positive, x-axis positive, and we have x-y-axis positive as well. When we look at quadrant 2, we have x-axis as positive, and y-axis as negative. Oh, that should have been a plus there, not an x. Sorry, guys. So, what am I doing? It's obviously been a long day. This is a positive. There's your negative. So, quadrant 3, as we move in a, in a clockwise circle, this is the way it's kind of, we're moving and we're naming these, these quadrants. Quadrant three is we're moving negative here and we're moving negative here. So negative and negative. Now in your book, it talks about uh, foldables. If you would like to do a foldable because you're a kinesthetic learner or if you want to you see it in person, that's a great way to do it. I'm not requiring you to do it, but I, you do need to know quadrant one is positive, positive, top right. Quadrant 2 is positive, negative down there. Po quadrant 3 is right here. And quadrant 4 is going to be positive, or sorry, negative, and then positive because we move x axis and then we move y axis. So the way you label things on the Cartesian plane is always, always, always x then y so when you put look at it it's always x then y so x is positive here then y x is positive here then y is negative there things look the same x is positive here y is or sorry x is negative y is negative and x is negative y is positive i hope this is making sense quadrant one x, y, positive, positive, quadrant 2, positive, negative, quadrant 3, negative, negative, quadrant 4, negative, positive, as we continue to move in the clockwise circle there. So let's practice this a little bit. As we get, let's start with this dot right here. So as we, we label x, then y every time. So the x is negative 5. As we move through, here's 0. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then we have to go up 
one, two, three, four. So it's negative five and four is how we write the location of that dot. As we move over to this dot over here, we have again, we count one, then we count two, so the two is the X, and then we move up one, two, three, four. So we have two and four for that one. The green, the green dot in quadrant one here is located at one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, so five and three. Purple over here is located at one, two, three, four, five, six, and negative one. So six, negative one. I hope you're following along. If you want to pause and label this on your own, you can do that. If not, then here it is. It's one, two, three, four, five, four, sorry. And then you go down one, two. So f negative four and negative two. Now, if you remember from before, both numbers here are positive. Positive 2, positive 4. In quadrant 2, positive and then a negative. In quadrant 3, both are negative. And in quadrant 4, x is negative, y is positive. Apparently, there's scribbles all over the page. Um, so now we're going to do this the opposite order. We're going to label A at negative 7 and 3. So when we go across 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then negative 3, 1, 2, I have to move this out of the way. No. And it, anyways, it will be right there behind the recording right up here is a and that's at negative seven and negative three b will be located negative five one because zero is always here zero and zero is there so one two three four five and negative two will be right here so this is b right here there's your b as you can see there. Um, C is located at 0 and 2. So for X, we go 0. So we stay right here. We don't move at all. And then we go up 2. So 2 is right here. So this is C right there. If we go to D, positive 3, negative 2. 1, 2, 3, negative 2. There's D. So if you want to pause it and do the last two on your own, you can. If not, here we go. Positive 7 and 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 3 is E. E is located right here. And D is located at 4 and 0. So as we go through... We count one, two, three, four, and we go up zero. So right here is F. Oh, sorry, the F, this is supposed to be F. F is located right on the X axis. So as you can see that when X or when Y is zero, it's located directly on this X axis. When x is 0, it's located directly on the y-axis right there on as c. Um, yeah, if you need to do those last two slides again, please re re rewind it and do it again. You should now understand an ordered pair x and y is used to locate any point on a Cartesian plane or a grid. All points located within the same quadrant have the same signs for their x-coordinate and the same signs for their y-coordinate. Um, and points on the x-axis have a value x and 0. Points on the y-axis have the value 0 and y. You should also know what an x-axis is and what a y-axis is, as well as, obviously, what a grid is. Thanks very much. Good luck with your homework.